Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing chronic gastritis and peptic ulcers. Okay, so we've now discussed uh, the uh, gross anatomy of the stomach and we've also discussed the histology of the stomach wall. Uh, what I now want to discuss is the actual mechanisms underlying uh, gastric acid secretion by the parietal cells. So firstly, Let's draw an in more in detail picture of these parietal cells because actually I have undersold them to you. They are far more interesting cells than the way I have drawn them. This picture does not do them credit. They have been drawn as though they have the structure of just a normal old um, uh, columnar epithelial cell, but in fact they have a far more interesting structure. Okay, so let's now draw a bigger version of what we drew back there. Okay, so we'll start off by drawing uh, the basement membrane here. So let's shade this in in turquoise, and this is the basement membrane. Okay, now sitting on that basement membrane, we have these uh, parietal cells. Okay, so I'll draw a parietal cell here. And basically, they have these this funny shape where uh, they have these projections outwards. Then the nucleus is back here, and then they have another projection like this to make a small little tunnel basically out. And basically the columnar epithelial cells will then be moulded in around them. So here is a columnar epithelial cell with its nucleus down here. I'll put in the nucleus of the uh, parietal cell here. And then we'll have another columnar epithelial cell up here basically. And it will have its nucleus right down here as well. Okay, right, so this is the parietal cell with this bizarre shape here. Basically, it has this little tunnel system uh, within it, basically, that's in contact with uh, the, um, the, well, it's in contact with the lumen of the gastric gland, which is then in contact with the gastric pit, which is then in contact with the lumen of the stomach. So basically what these parietal cells are going to do is they're going to be secreting hydrochloric acid into this little tunnel system here. And basically these little tunnels here are known as canaliculi. Okay? So it's going to be secreting hydrochloric acid into the canaliculi basically. Okay, so what we now want to look at is the mechanism by which it actually secretes this hydrochloric acid into the canaliculi. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this apical membrane here and this basolateral membrane here and basically zoom in. So I'm going to draw a bigger picture still. Okay, so this portion here is this here and this piece of membrane is this piece of membrane here. Okay, so on the apical membrane which faces into the canaliculi, you have a special protein called the proton potassium ATPase. Okay, so this is the proton potassium ATPase. And the slang name for the proton potassium ATPase is to call it just the proton pump. Okay, and when we're looking at drugs which will inhibit this protein, they will just be called proton pump inhibitors. Okay, so I'll colour in this proton potassium ATPase then in purple here. And basically, what this protein does is it moves two protons out of the cytoplasm and into the canaliculi in exchange for two potassium ions being brought back from the lumen of the canaliculi into the cytoplasm of the cell. Okay, so two protons are chucked out, two potassiums are brought back in. Now every time that happens, it then has to hydrolyze ATP. So this process doesn't just occur spontaneously, it has to be driven by the hydrolysis of ATP, which will provide energy for uh, this transformation to occur. So this is an active transport. Okay, right. Now, we're halfway there to creating the hydrochloric acid now. We have secreted the protons, okay? And another thing I want you to note is that this transformation, this movement, is electrically neutral. You have moved two positively charged cations out, and you have brought two positively charged cations back in. So this is not creating any sort of problem with the electrical potential difference across the membrane. And it's not interfering with that at all. We're moving two positive charge out, two positive charge in. It's as though we did nothing. 
Okay, we're just interfering with the concentrations of these ions on either side. Okay, right. So what's going to happen? Well, proton concentration within the cytoplasm of the cell is going to go down because we're continuously chucking protons out. Okay, now there is an equilibrium within the cell, okay, and this is an equilibrium between water and carbon dioxide on one side and uh, then bicarbonate anions and uh, protons on the other side. Okay, so let me discuss this in a bit more detail. So basically, water and carbon dioxide can uh, assemble into an intermediate that I haven't shown here, but there's an intermediate basically. And the intermediate is carbonic acid, which we've seen already. Okay, so carbonic acid basically is carbon uh, with a double bond to an oxygen and then with two alcohol groups coming off it like this. So you can imagine basically if we cut uh, one of these uh, bonds between the carbon atom and the oxygen atom here, okay, and just one of them, not both. So we cut one of these covalent bonds in this double bond here and send one electron back to the oxygen and one back to this carbon. And then if we do the same for the bond between this oxygen and this hydrogen. And of course, this isn't the electronic mechanism. This is just to understand the reaction. Okay, if we send one electron back to this oxygen and one back to this hydrogen, then basically we combine this hydrogen onto the oxygen here because both of them will have free electrons. That creates one of these alcohol groups. And then we combine this oxygen here onto this carbon uh, to put on another alcohol group. Now, carbonic acid is not very stable at all. So basically what happens is it very quickly breaks down into bicarbonate anions, okay, as shown and then also a proton. Now, this reaction is not one way, okay? So the um, thermodynamic profile of the reactants is not uh, far enough away from the thermodynamic profile of the products for this reaction to be one way, and instead it becomes uh, bi-directional, basically. So it's a reversible reaction. Okay, now it is catalyzed by the enzyme carbonic anhydrase. So to go in either direction, either from carbon dioxide and water to bicarbonate and a proton, or from bicarbonate anions and a proton to carbon dioxide and water, you need the enzyme carbonic anhydrase. But I must stress that this enzyme doesn't prefer going one direction. It will catalyze both directions equally well, basically. Okay, uh, it just um, lowers the activation energy for the reaction, basically, and makes it occur at a physiologically relevant time scale. Okay, so, uh, usually uh, we have this equilibrium in the cell where the concentration of water and carbon dioxide is in equilibrium with the concentration of bicarbonate uh, anions and protons, okay? And it's a dynamic equilibrium, so basically all the time uh, water and carbon dioxide molecules are being converted into bicarbonate anions and protons, but the number of bicarbonate anions and protons which are also being reconverted back to water and carbon dioxide is equal to the number of water and carbon dioxide molecules which are being converted to bicarbonate anions and protons. So the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the backwards reaction. Now basically if you suddenly lower the concentration of protons in the cytoplasm, the rate of the backward reaction will go down and the rate of the forward reaction will remain the same because we're not changing the concentration of water or carbon dioxide in the cytoplasm. Okay, so that will mean that the equilibrium suddenly breaks and the forward reaction wins and you get a net movement in the direction of the products basically. So the concentration of the products goes up within the cytoplasm. So this returns the proton concentration upwards. Okay, and this continues to provide the protons which are needed by this proton potassium ATPase, which is pumping protons out. So this reaction basically is supplying the protons that are going to be pumped out. Now, what you will notice is that this is unsustainable. If we do this onwards and onwards and onwards to create more and more protons all the time, then what's going to happen? Well, you might argue that we're going to run out of water and carbon dioxide, but then I would urge you to think uh, water and carbon dioxide are the um, 
waste products of respiration. So we do not need to worry about their levels being depleted, okay? We are producing those continuously. The more worrying thing is that bicarbonate anions are going up and up and up and up within the cell cytoplasm. Okay, so how are we going to get rid of those? Well, basically what we do is we have a co-transporter, oh sorry, not a co-transporter, an antiporter, okay? A slight difference uh, that it's going to transport the two things in opposite directions, okay? And this is a bicarbonate anion chloride anion anti-transporter, okay? So it will move the bicarbonate anions out of the cell so it will take one bicarbonate anion out of the cell, okay, and in exchange it will bring one chloride anion into the cell, okay, so it just swaps the bicarbonate anion for the chloride anion, okay. Again, another thing to stress is that this is electrically neutral, okay, so we're not messing with the electrical potential difference across the cell membrane by doing this. Okay, so that will get rid of the bicarbonate and it will bring chloride anions into the cell. So now, what is overall happening now? Well, we're going to accumulate chloride anions within the cytoplasm. Now, what else will we accumulate in the cytoplasm, which I haven't mentioned before? But we're also accumulating potassium uh, ions within the cytoplasm. Now, that's not good, okay, because we're moving the potassium ions out from the apical surface, okay, so they're moving from the apical surface into the cytoplasm. If we just leave them in the cytoplasm, then what's going to happen is we're going to run out of potassium ions on the apical surface and then the proton potassium pump is going to get stuck even if it's got a continual supply of protons from this beautiful equilibrium here. Um, it's not going to work if it hasn't got any potassium ions to move into the cell, okay? So we need to return the potassium ions back out onto the surface, but we can't just move potassium ions because those have got a charge, okay? So we'd be disturbing the electrical potential difference. So what we do is we move them uh, alongside chloride anions. So basically potassium ions will go through uh, potassium ion channels here. So let's say we've just moved these two potassium ions uh, back out. But at the same time, through chloride anion channels, the chloride anions that we are building up within the cytoplasm of the cell, whoops, um, these will move out of the chloride anion channels as well. So you'll also get two chloride anions moving out as well. So that again is an electrically neutral movement because we're moving the same number of potassium ions as we are chloride anions. Now, I should stress that they're going through their own channel. So, this here is a potassium ion channel in yellow, and this, which I'll highlight now in orange, is a chloride anion channel. Okay, so that beautifully recycles the potassium ions back onto the apical surface so that they can then just be recycled round and round and round and round. Okay, but overall now, what have we achieved? We've got hydrogen ions on the apical surface. We've got chloride anions on the apical surface. We have therefore got the two components of hydrochloric acid. Now, of course, when you move salt uh, onto this apical surface, what will then follow is that water will move by osmosis and will join that salt, okay? So therefore, we have overall produced hydrochloric acid on the apical surface of our parietal cell. Okay, so that is the mechanism by which hydrochloric acid is secreted by these parietal cells. Okay, right. So, what we will turn our attention to in the next video is the uh, mechanisms which control the secretion of hydrochloric acid by parietal cells.